She's alive. I'm trying to get some of the trivial stuff figured out before I get back into fab work. One of the, the trivial things was the muffler. muffler was too big and it's rubbing up against the, the pulley, the cable, as I raise and lower um, the, uh, the power head on the sawmill. And this is going to get pretty hot and I don't want that cable rubbing up against it. It's just a, a premature failure point in my opinion. Although it'll probably take a number of years for it to wear out. But uh, before I ran over to the hardware store and bought new bolts and washers, I, I went to the go-to, went to the uh, uh, the assorted variety I have in my shop, and I was able to find what I needed. And so this saved me easily three or four bucks because they're metric. And everybody knows that anything metric in this, com this country is uh, a little bit more expensive than standard. So we're going to get this resolved. I may have to scoot the motor over just a little tiny bit, and then we're going to dive back into fab work. I'm moving the engine forward about a little over an inch, inch and a quarter. And this should give me enough room to where I'm not fighting this cable anymore. The other alternative I have is to move the entire platform forward, but it's going to conflict with one of the mounts and so I don't want to do that. Alright, where's the drill? As I'm building the sawmill, I'm trying to use lock washers and or thread lock on everything that I can just to keep anything that's moving from falling off. Now you can see I've got enough play between the, between the uh, muffler and the cable. Back to fabricating. All right, so there's a couple schools of thought when it comes to the belt on the sheave. Uh, there's one school of thought that you should run it a little bit sloppy and as the belt goes around the actual as the saw blade goes around, the actual belt has a little bit of slop, and what that does is it supposedly kicks any excess sawdust out. Um, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to try and run this belt as tight as I can. I know this belt's going to loosen up no matter what, so it's probably still going to end up being a little bit sloppy, but all this belt is doing is giving enough traction for the saw blade to run on. Um, there's three different types of belts. There's what they call the A, Bs, and Cs. This is a B. What that means is the thickness of the V is, is the B thickness. The C was too thick and the A was too thin. Uh, this is a 59 inch Napa belt. Um, I, somewhere around 15 bucks a piece. I'm going to have to use a little bit of elbow grease to get this on, but I'm hoping this, this is uh, simply going to make it work better by being nice and tight. I took a little elbow grease, but we got it on there. Nice and tight, it sits just high enough off the sheave where it should be perfect amount of traction. Now comes the second. Let's say it's a boat that we're all in together that barely stays afloat while we are discussing. Right, there we go. So this is the diameter of my, um, I don't know what I want to call them, my arms that the pulleys are going to mount on. This is the diameter of the tubing that I used that, that would be the nestable telescopics and obviously it's, it's quite a bit bigger. This is inch and a half, this is two inch. Put the bolts right here all the way across so I could lock it down. But I still had the thought that I wanted to put some flat stock or something in there to take up that space. I went over to the scrapyard looking for some flat stock, couldn't find it. But what I did find was a piece 
of this, this lighter gauge. This is more of that same stuff I got yesterday to make the saw horses out of it. I think I can just slip this over the outside of it and weld it on there. And it's going to take up about an eighth, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. It should eliminate some of that slop. So I'm going to do that now. The back porch has a fall to it this way. So I'm first gonna get it sitting level this way before I level it front to back. All that I've got is my little torpedo level, which is fine. I have a four foot level somewhere, but I think it might be up at our property. So I'm gonna make this work. Shims, this is why I don't throw any away. Everything is sitting exactly where I want it. So now what's important to me, at least from a place to, to start from, is that I make sure that as I weld this in place, that that's absolutely level as well. So that's the next step. After I thickened up that arm, I now have six bolts that are gonna hold it in place and I'll put a jam nut on each one of these bolts to just make sure that it doesn't move around. So again, by doing this, this should ensure that I'm sitting as close to level on that arm as I can, but I'm still gonna use a level as I weld it in place. Okay, not only is it super important that I get this squared up, but that I also figure my clearances with that pulley. I don't want this conflicting with any of my set screws Ruger, hush. Conflicting with any of my set screws. Um, I want it far enough away, but close enough that I don't, I don't have to run a bigger saw blade uh, than I have to. Now that I've got this thing square, I'm going to put a little tack on this side just to hold it until I can figure out where level's at. That's the nice part about putting a little tack on there is if you do it right, there's a little bit of mobility still left in it. fun part. Do this without breaking the weld. <laughs> and it moved a little bit. We're going to bring it back. Right there. And I'm going to put my helmet on and burn it. Crank the welder up because this is some thick steel. You know, this is when it's pretty important to have good clean steel. There's a lot of times where I will use, I'll weld over rusty, uh, rusty metal because I'm using a flux core wire, but I cleaned this up really good. I tried to get all the oil off it because I wanted to make sure this burns in good. This is important to me. Even still, I'm gonna leave enough play in those pillow blocks to where there's still some, a chance to adjust this. I'm still leaving room to adjust it, but I just, I want it to be minimal in quite a few places. I don't want this to have a bunch of little places that I'm constantly worried about moving around as this thing vibrates. I'm about to burn in this other side here. What's super important is that both sides above and beyond being square are set the same distance forward and the holes are set the same distance forward. Again, doing everything we possibly can to keep this as square as possible. I've got it ready now. I'm going to burn it in. I've never professed to be a welder, but I know what it takes to put down a good bead. Those might be a couple of the prettiest beads I've ever put down. It really helps to get your stuff clean. All right, I've got everything in place where I want it as far as the pulleys are concerned. I can see there's some things I'm gonna have to change, but I wanna measure for this saw blade so I can figure out uh, 
what it's going to take, and that's the last thing that I haven't ordered, so I need to do that right now. My assistant Cheyenne is going to help. Matt, that seems awful long. things I'm figuring out is that this shaft on the motor this is about an 11 horse motor and this motor came off a generator it's actually brand new it's only got about four hours on it uh, it was given to a shop class for in high school and they never did anything with it and I bought it I picked it up for about a hundred bucks um, the common issue with the generator motors is the tapered shaft the actually actual diameter of the shop shaft is seven eighths of an inch what I did is I ordered a pulley that was seven eighths of an inch and what I'm trying to do is make the constant speed that this generator motor runs at, which I believe is right around 3,600 RPMs. That's what uh, somebody actually messaged me on YouTube and told me that. And so I went with a smaller, a much smaller pulley here, and also a smaller pulley on the, the shaft that turns the, um, the, the, the two big sheaves, thinking that would work, but I gotta be honest, I think this is gonna probably end up being about an eight or, or 10 inch pulley, and this is probably gonna end up being in about uh, a 14 inch pulley on the other side too fast running that belt that saw blade too fast is almost as bad as running it uh, too slow um, the running it too fast will, will wear the blade out as well so finding that constant speed is a little bit of a balancing act especially in the beginning but what I'm still gonna do right now is I want to I want to see this thing run and turn the sheave so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the tapered portion off I'm going to cut a groove in uh, with my Dremel that accepts this um, pulley, and then we're going to fire it up. Too fast though, that's what I was afraid of. I'm gonna have to re gear that uh, motor. After myself and Cheyenne measured last night, we figured out that the belt was gonna to have to be almost 200 inches. So, what I did is I cut out the excess that I had on the arms and brought the wheels in, and that now changes it to a 14 foot 11 inch belt, which is still big. This is all caused by the fact that I went 48 inches wide. Um, if I had gone 36 inches wide, um, it would have made it quite a bit smaller. Also, the large wheels affect this. There's uh, saw blades out there. They're just a little bit more expensive. This is no big deal. Um, get the blade, the blade on here. 
I now have the ability to lock it down pretty tight, get it nice and tight. Um, the pulleys work well, everything spins really well. Um, I, um, I welded some one inch flat stock on the front of this to, to give more stability to the to the uh, the telescopic part of it. This is all could have been solved if I had simply gotten the right uh, nestable uh, tubing, square tubing, but they didn't have it when I bought it. So um, started the motor, got the motor running. Uh, it's running at way too high of RPMs for the uh, the pulleys that I have. So I'm going to have to get much larger pulleys, which I, I figured this. I kind of thought this. I'm also going to have to get the the right carburetor for this engine but other than that it's done um, everything's done um, I just need to finish the tracking system and then put it to work